Welcome to At Home today. We're so glad that you can be with us. And this is the first part of getting ready for Christmas. Today is part one of cookies. Next week will be part two of cookies. And then we have gifts from the kitchen. And then we have our Christmas dinner. And I hope that you're going to tell all your friends about it because not only are we having um, all these delicious ideas, but we're going to show you how to package them, how to present them. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy these next few weeks. We're not going to have our newsletter like we normally do. We're putting together a booklet like we do every year for you. We'll tell you at the end of the program how you can get your copy. But I want to talk a little bit about traditions. And I've read this, and I wish I had the time to tell you or to read the story to you, how a, a woman who was Swedish, their family came from Sweden, and her grandmother brought recipes that they used every Christmas for Swedish cookies. And her grandmother was the keeper of the recipe until she passed it on down to her daughter. And then the daughter all the years would gather all the female members, her daughters and grandchildren together and, and they would bake cookies, these precious memories and cookies from Sweden, they'd bake them once a year and they kept handing down the traditional recipes generation after generation. What a great tradition that is to get started. Maybe this year would be a good time for you to think about that. And I like the idea where she said Grandma always gave her a little piece of dough, a little tiny rolling pin. And I remember this, Mom did the same thing with me. And I would roll and I'd play and it had all the sprinkles and everything and it would be all mixed up and be dropped on the floor three or four times, bring it back up and roll it out and she'd say, okay, here's the cookie. She put it on, we'll bake it. And I'd bake it and oh, I was so excited. I'd think it was so pretty and she'd say, oh, isn't it lovely, but don't you dare eat it. Because she knew it had been on the floor four or five times and who knows what else was there, but she wanted me to be proud. So if you're baking with grandchildren or your children, give them a little piece of dough, let them play with it, but always bake it for them so that they know that what they have done is as important as what you're doing. Well, I'm going to cut this short today because we have a lot to do. Stay tuned because we're going to get ready for part one of Christmas Cookies. Stay with us now. We'll be right back after today's hint. Here's today's at-home hint. Dip your spoon in hot water before measuring lard, butter, and etc. It will slip off the spoon more easily. And put flour in a large shaker and use for dusting cake pans, meat, and etc. It's less messy and doesn't waste flour. If you have an at-home hint, a favorite recipe, or just a friendly greeting you'd like to share, we'd like to hear from you. Post it in the comments of this video or visit our Facebook page. Well, to get started, I've just put three-fourths of a cup of butter into the mixer and I'm creaming it. We're going to make something called Christmas Lights. Now stay with me on this one because this is great. You're going to want this for your kids, teachers to give as a gift. It's just a neat idea. We're making cookies in the shape of Christmas lights, putting them together with licorice and putting them in a gift box. Stay with me now. To make the dough, we have three-fourths of a cup of butter, third of a cup of sugar, third of a cup of packed brown sugar. Now you can do this by hand, but really it's better if you do it with this mixer because it comes to a smoother dough. And we're gonna add one egg. All right, we're gonna beat that together. And let's add a little bit of vanilla to this too. This is kind of a basic recipe. It's not a hard recipe, but it makes a really good dough. Very easy to work with. Now, after that, we have our two cups of flour and we have about, um, let's see, three-fourths of a teaspoon of baking soda. That's there. And this is only a third of a cup of real finely ground walnuts, real, real fine, pecans, whatever would be fine. We're gonna put that in there and we're gonna mix that up with the flour because this is your dry ingredients. All right, now you can see this is nice and creamy. We're gonna add our dry ingredients to the creamed mixture all at once, and you're gonna let this go until it forms a dough. Sorry, until it forms a dough. That happens, what can I say, all right? And uh, when it forms the dough, then you're gonna put it into the refrigerator. Wasn't that sweet? I always do that with this, because it's got, it's got a control over here and a control over here, and I always get them mixed up. 
And you can see this, door, this dough is going to form very quickly. I'm off to a good start, aren't I? Already have to clean up the whole kitchen. I'm probably covered, doesn't matter. It's what happens. All right, when this dough is done, you're going to put it in the refrigerator, cover it in the refrigerator for an hour, let it chill down. Once it's chilled, you're going to have a dough that looks something like this. All right? You move out here. So you need a lot of room. Get everything off the kitchen counters when you're working at home, when you're doing Christmas cookies. Clear out everything. Get all the stuff that you don't need. Get it out of there because you're going to need all the room you can. And you're going to roll this out a little bit on top. You're going to roll this out to a fourth of an inch thick. Now it has to be that thick. You say, oh, I'll go thinner. Don't do it, not with this one, because what happened when we were baking these, we found out if you do it too thin, they tend to melt and go all over the pan, and then you can't do what you need to do. This is the shape, and we're going to give you the exact uh, shape of this. We'll give you a pattern in the booklet that we're going to send to you. You cut it out, trace it and cut it out, lay it on the dough, and just cut around it. And as you can see, this is very, very easy to do. This is not hard to do at all. All right? When you have cut around it, just like that, now I need a little spatula here. Then you take them up, pick them up, just like that, and you kind of shape it. If it's got a point, round it off on the bottom. Shape it. Don't let all those little fragments be there. You want to make sure that it's shaped just the way you want it to look when it bakes. And you put it on your buttered cookie sheet. The next thing you're going to do, you need to have a hole in the top of it. So you take a straw and you put it in there and you make it go around and make it a little bit bigger than the straw, just about like that. All right? And you're going to do the whole, the whole tray full. You're going to put them in the oven. They bake from 8 to 10 minutes, probably more like 10. They don't get real brown. Bring them out. And when you're done, you have a cookie that looks just like this. All right? This is your Christmas light cookie. Now we need to ice those so that they're going to look like Christmas lights. And the way we do that, you take five cups. I'm going to clean this up. We'll use this later. They'll bake them off, I know. And we're going to take five cups of powdered sugar and five, a half a cup of milk plus one tablespoon. You mix that together in a bowl, and then you divide it into five bowls, like we have here, just like this. And you need to use these paste kind of colors. This you will not work. Don't even try it. You're wasting your time. If you try to do it with those squeegee bottles, it doesn't work. These are in cake decorating places. Honest, you see that? This is the blue. You just put it in there and you mix it around. You'll be amazed at how highly concentrated that blue is. And you can add more and more if you want to to make it more and brighter and more vivid blue. But I tell you, as you keep, if it gets a little stiff, add a little bit more milk, because sometimes when this sets for a while, it'll set up. All right? But you just mix it around. So we have blue, we have red. And again, it's just, you just take the tiniest little bit. Because if you take too much, I mean, it's a wasting. You don't really need to do that. And you need to change your color every time. Oops, I already got a red. Let's do another one. Okay, Christmas green. When you go to the cake supplier, ask them for the Christmas colors. Ask them for a nice, bright, vivid green because that's the color you want. You don't want a pastel or a mint. You want dark, vivid colors, just like the lights that you see on the tree. Okay, we have green. Now we need the yellow. And again, when you get this done, these colors will be so bright and vivid. And all you do is ice them. Since I have the blue, Maybe I'll just show you with this. Actually, I like it a little darker than that. It should be a darker blue than that. Let's give it some more here. Just a bit more. Because you want a vivid blue like a light. And then we're going to put this in a gift box. We'll show you at the end of the program how absolutely darling this is. Because once you have these iced, and you're only going to ice them up to the edge of where the hole is. Okay? You're going to make it a straight across right here and then ice down. Straight across and ice down. Actually, I would thin this down. This is just a little bit too thick because you want this icing to roll off the edge so it covers the edge of your cookie. All right? And you let them totally dry. 
Once they're dry, I think I have a tray over there. Linda, could you hand me that tray over there so I can show them just what this is all about? Okay, this is the tray of cookies. And as you can see, here we are with the darker blue. Now you just have to add more blue to that. It will get that color. And here we are with the red. Here's the green. And here's the yellow. Aren't they great? Now what you do, you take some of this black licorice that you get wherever you buy your black licorice, they'll have it. That's why it's important for that hole to be big enough for this black licorice to go through it. All right? And what you do then is just thread one through there, and then you thread it through the next color, whatever color you want it to be. Make sure that hole is, again, I can't stress because it'll break. We've had that to happen. And you can leave as much between them as you want, and then put it through another one. What I would do is put them through one of every color, and you can leave one even be uh, white if you wanted to, all right? Put them in a gift box, and we're going to show you at the end of the program. That's called Christmas lights. Easy and simple. All right, now we've put together a Scotch shortbread, and we did it before because we're saving time. It's one pound of butter. It's four cups of flour and one cup of sugar. You cream the, the butter and the sugar together, and then you add the flour. It can't be any simpler than that. And you'll get a real nice moist dough that is, is enough to make two pans full of Scotch shortbread. One to eat and one to give as a gift. Or if you have a hungry crowd, just let them eat it all, right? <laughs> but here's what's nice. This you're gonna push out. I use my hands to push this down. And you wanna make, it's very pliable. It's not a stiff dough whatsoever because of all the butter that's in there for one thing. But this is the time you splurge because it's holidays. This all freezes very well. Um, I, don't, I didn't freeze those, so I'm not sure that the Christmas lights does, but I think that they probably would. And you wanna make this very smooth all across the top. This goes into a 375 degree oven. And this bakes for 35 minutes. Now once you have it pretty well, I would spend a little more time making sure that this is nice and smooth on the top. Okay, just like that. I might even take the back of a spoon to make sure that there's no finger marks on that. Then you take the fork and just barely go around. Just make some lines. Make sure you don't pierce that little pan here if you're gonna give it as a gift because this is your foil pans. And you just go around the whole outer edge just like that. Put it in the oven and bake it for 35 minutes. And what you get is a really nice scotch shortbread. Okay, we're gonna take a break while I'm finishing this one. When we come back, we've got some more goodies for you, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you love watching At Home with Arlene Williams? Then be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. It's filled with classic episodes from over 20 years of At Home and more videos are added each day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. What we're going to do now is something called um, a lemon sandwich. Now if you like lemon or anybody in your family likes lemon, they're gonna love this. All you do is take Ritz crackers, just like this, and you put them out with the bottoms down, tops down, bottoms down, whatever. And then you take a can of the already prepared lemon frosting. Now people around here have been eating these today and they think they're absolutely great. And what you do, like you can just take a spoon and put it on, but I happen to like my little gadget here. So you just pipe about a teaspoon, just like that, on each cracker, just like that. Okay, now you're gonna put a lid on just like we have here. We put them on and it's nice to kind of let them set a little bit because they'll set up just like these have. Meanwhile, what you're gonna do is get your white chocolate and that's what these are called. These are at cake decorating uh, stores, craft stores have these and these are dots and they melt really easy either in the top of a double boiler or in the microwave. And you just, thank you, Linda, you microwave a little bit at a time. Be very careful, they burn easy. I would start with about a third of that and do only a minute and stop and see if it's done. 
Then you buy lemon oil and you put just a drop or two in there because that's gonna flavor your chocolate. Now once you've done that, then you pick up one of these, drop it into that chocolate, and you'll, you'll be able to judge better at how quickly you can use up that chocolate so you'll know whether to keep doing that many or not. I mean, it's very careful because this stuff burns, and if it's burned, you can't use it. Scrape it across this top and put it on your waxed paper. That is the most easy cookie, and it is so good, particularly if you like lemon, you're in for a treat, I'm telling you. That's one of the easiest. Lemon sandwiches. We're gonna show you some more at the end of the program, just how easy and how beautiful they look for your uh, holidays. Well, Sandy, my helper, my cohort, she, we were baking at my house, and she made these cookies, come on. She made these cookies that were so easy, I said, Sandy, how about you showing us how to do them? And of course, she fought me all the way, but are you gonna make them? Yes, I'll now, make them. Now, what are these them. called? They're called Easy Butter Skip Scotch Chip Chocolate Cookies. That's not easy to say, no, is it? No, it's not. Okay, why don't you put them together? I'm gonna work on something else over okay. here. Go ahead, Sam. Okay, what are we doing first here? Well, I'm gonna clean up the mess. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is so easy, Arlene. Yeah. Very easy. We got a uh, super moist chocolate fudge cake mix. Just any kind can, will work, though. I'm sure. But not the one that has all the fancy stuff. Just try to get it as normal and, and like the simplest cake mix that you can. Because sometimes you buy the ones with the pudding and all that stuff that require too much and you can't do it. All right, okay. wait, I think your other, yeah, there we go. Yeah, here I am over here. Okay, we're just going to put oil, and we have a half a cup of vegetable oil. Great. And two eggs. All right, what else is going on? Okay. Two eggs. That's it. What else? And we're going to bit, mix it. Mix it around? Yep. Okay. Sure seems easy enough to no. me. You don't have to do the flour, the butter, nothing, and all that other stuff. Nothing. Very easy. All right. My kind of easy. I know. That's, that's <laughs> Sandy. She likes to eat. While she's mixing that, come back with me. I'm going to show you what I'm ta talking to you about. These are called the coconut meringues, and they're so easy, so simple. I just have three egg whites. I'm going to show you. Three egg whites here and they have to be a little stiffer than that because what you're going to start to do is add about a third of a cup of sugar at the time and these have to be stiff once this sugar gets incorporated so you do it a little bit at a time because you don't want it to be grainy you want it to be completely incorporated and you do that by just adding sugar a bit at a time all right and the volume make this go as fast as you can this just has to whip up as fast as and volume, you're whipping air into the egg whites. You're gonna keep adding, then you keep just a little bit of the sugar back, all right? Now once this is up to almost completely stiff, I mean hard stiff, I'm gonna add just a little bit of vanilla. For you folks out there that are looking for no fat cookies, this has no fat. There's sugar in it, but there's no fat as far as the butter and stuff, all right? There would be some fat in the coconut, but compared to other cookies, it might be a lot less. Okay, so now I think we're there. Let's take a look and we'll see. Beautiful. See how it stays up there nice and firm? That's the way you want it to look. All right. How are we doing over there, Sam? Okay, we're doing good. Did you add the nuts and we, the butterscotch we to that? We sure did. And now you're just going to roll them, right? That's right. Okay, great. That's easy. <laughs> Easy to do, that's right. All right, now we're just gonna add the rest of this sugar just lightly on the top of the egg whites and the meringue, because it says to do that. And then we put in a cup and a half of the flaked coconut, and we're gonna fold this in. Now, when you're working with egg whites, I want you to remember, butter is the enemy, or grease, or anything that's greasy. If there's a bit of yellow in those egg whites, they will not whip up. So it's important when you're, when you're separating them. And it's important not to use, I, you see I didn't use a, a spatula or a wooden a spoon because sometimes that grease and oil stays in there. So you use the metal because the metal you know is cleaned and hot when you sterilize it after you've washed it. All right, so what you do with these, you drop these on a buttered sheet, on a buttered cookie sheet, 
all right? You put them in the oven, and they bake for, uh, in a really slow oven, like 250 degrees, for 25 minutes. They should hardly even have any color to them. They should look just like they look when you spoon them out. And you do these by teaspoonfuls also. I don't, have a, I don't have my cookie sheet here, but I'll show you what it should look like. When you drop it out, you should drop it just like that, about that size. Now, on a buttered cookie sheet, don't do it on wax paper, you don't put wax paper in the oven, but just about like that. And they will bake, and I'll tell you, they're so easy and so good and so light, and you keep those in an airtight container. Really, really important. Okay, Sandy, show them what you're doing over here. That looks really great. Okay, we're just making little balls on here, and this is an ungreased cookie sheet. Ungreased cookie sheet, that's right. the difference. Now I'm gonna show you another one that's really quick, because we don't have much time. And I know you'll say to me, you rushed, you rushed, but I'm trying to bring you a lot of ideas. That's why I rushed. Two ingredients to this. You get a tube of the sugar cookie dough that's in the refrigerator case. You take one teaspoon, put it in this little muffin tin, you see this? You can use the Hershey Kisses. You can use the Hershey with almonds. These happen to be hugs. You don't even shape that. You take this and you plunge this on that cookie dough just like that. And you bake it in the oven. You will not believe how quick and how easy you can have great cookies. These cookies are absolutely delicious. I mean, this is a cookie your kids can help you to make. The only thing I would caution you to do is do not push down so that that chocolate hits the bottom of the pan because if you do, when you go to take them out, that chocolate ho holds onto the bottom of the pan, you can't get it out. Push it just until it's, there's enough of cookie dough. I'll show you again. Just about a teaspoon. This should make about four dozen, one of these packs. And you just take your chocolate and you push it down on there. And that will cook up over there and bakes the nicest little cookies you ever want to see. Thanks, Sam. Did a good Hi. job. Hi. Appreciate Thank it. you. We'll be right back. Here's how you can get some important information about today's program. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Just go to ctvn.org slash at home to get all the recipes from today's show for free. That's right, no subscriptions. They're available online at no cost and more are being added each day. So join us at ctvn.org slash at home to get today's recipes now. Well, I know it was a hectic program and we wanted to show you all the cookies that we could make. Let's start taking a rundown here. These are called chocolate kissed cookies and that's what they look like when they're baked. Next to them is our Scotch shortbread. This we put out to serve, but you can also make it in a pan and make it a nice gift for your neighbor, for the mailman, whomever. Here on our uh, cookie tree, we have Coconut meringues. These are so light, no fat to them. See, they're hardly colored at all. So they have to be very light, pale when you take them out of the oven. Down here we have Sandy's special chocolate butterscotch cookie. Butterscotch chip, that's a good cookie. Easy to do. Next to that we have our lemon sandwich. Remember that's a Ritz, cooker, Ritz cracker with um, just some lemon frosting between and we covered it with chocolate. And next to that, there they are, our Christmas lights. Aren't they great? We just love it. What a nice gift that would be for your child to give to a teacher, Sunday school teacher, to anyone. So be sure to join us the next time because it just wouldn't be the same without you here at home. See you then. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Fresh produce provided by Jordan Banana, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Dravosburg, Pennsylvania. Appliances provided by Decor Distinctive Appliances, a reflection of your good taste. Groceries provided by Foodland, where the answer is always yes. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.